welcome back to another episode of Selfords from the Field podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Dirksen. We're back with a great episode talking to your favorite Minnesota farmers, the one and only Larson Farms. Uh, if you've been following their YouTube channel or social media for a while, you have probably seen that uh, they've been using the Selford 5200 Enforcer on their corn ground for fall tillage uh, for a couple years now. Um, and this past fall, uh, they demoed one of the independent series, the 4200 um, for fall tillage on their edible bean and soybean ground. So in this episode, uh, territory manager Kyle Hansen sits down with uh, Chet, Doug, and Randy to discuss their experience demoing the 4200. They dive into sulfur tillage versus rippers and chisel plows. Um, maintenance on the 5200 Enforcer and everything else tillage at Larson Farms. So to kick things off, Dougo talks about the 2022 fall conditions and running the 4200 this fall. Let's take a listen. I would say it started out very dry, so it was it was like anything in the uh, dry conditions, kind of uh, not covering as much as we had hoped but yet it was doing a lot better than a chisel plow would have ever come close to. We have no more big chunks that we would have had what, last, bowling ball size last, stuff. Last was, time it was this dry, it, we had to unhook the chisel plow because we literally ripped it apart. And then we tried ripping, you know, and then you just got bigger balls of dirt yep. to try to work with in the spring. And it, it left us a seed bed that's gonna be more workable uh when we come into 2023 spring without a doubt no more you, you drive around you see a few of these guys that said i'm gonna rip because it's what i do yeah and you've got the clay peeled up on the bottom of their big chunks, big chunks of yeah. soil and so. i think our uh, initial thought of oh it ain't covering as good as we thought maybe was also because we were used to the 5200 and that i mean that was like it looked like a big that covered field like a after you plow. were done. Now that we've gotten a little rain on it, it's looking yeah, a lot it's, darker. Yeah, it's still a lot better than the chisel plow ever done. And and we got a couple of, I don't know, what was it, two, three tenths of rain? And, yep. and that, it's night and day difference. I mean, it's all what you want out of it. And and I think it'll all be fine. It's getting darker or blacker as each and we could, the reality of it, what I want in the spring is two inches of, of loose dirt to work with. Yep. We don't need six to eight inches of mud or fluff, depending on if it gets wet, then you just create a mush uh, pocket for your seeds. So yeah. give me two inches of workable soil, and that's that's all the planter needs. That's all I want. So And it'll you know, get that straw and get it to decay. Right. I mean, that's right. Good, get a good mix. No, no moss grass moms. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. There's none of that. That bean, you know, the black beans that we were in, that was a pile here. You know, it was heavy when we went out and worked in it. And that way, I don't think you guys yeah. will see much of that left in yeah. the spring. Even, yeah. even if we didn't get in there as much as we wanted, I think that stuff will decay. Yeah. Well, it's sizing it. The chisel plow don't size it. That just brings up dirt chunks. Drags it along and clumps it. <laughs> <laughs> Collects it. And I think we only realistically set it one time. When you guys are out, we, yep. give, it, we give it the initial once over, leveled it. And uh, after that, I think we adjusted it deeper one time. So if it ain't one of us running the thing that's got knowledge behind the equipment, yep. the hired people that come in and out, you can feel safe letting them go with that thing and knowing it's set decent mm -hmm. just after the rain is when we yeah, had to yeah, might have some it, it sunk in or bit in a lot better and then you had to take it out of the ground a little bit but otherwise yeah very very minimal setting on the thing so you know and i think we when we were running we lifted the baskets up did you guys continue to run it the same way that way Pretty much, I think we even took out the drag. We did not have the drags doing very much. Uh, just we, because we like we're, it rougher, yeah. and just for more surface area to dry. Come spring, it ain't flat. Give it some variability, so then when the field cultivator hits it, it's not just a mud yeah. mud pile. There's very <laughs> few years we want rain in the spring. <laughs> it's yeah. always, hey, if we could only dry it out, if we could only get it dried out. So the more surface area we feel for the sun and wind to get at, 
is why the baskets are up for us. And then that way it doesn't blow. Yeah, I mean, I know you're looking at that too, and it just seems like you're almost smooth. Your tabletop smooth, and we had everything down. You know, oh yeah, you, oh, could yeah. you could have planted behind yeah. if you for those guys with the soil that you would want to have it smooth to plant and it'll it did that i mean it will do that if it was end of april we would have been yeah. tickled oh, so pink head out with, with the planter yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys think this is a you know haven't haven't seen it in the fall you think it's something that is usable in the spring as well Ooh. i, I would try it i think we would have that sulfur that we do have um, that we use in the spring really liked it. We used the heck out of this this spring because it was just so I was ahead of the field cultivators while well, I'd like to be a day ahead and I was hitting anything that was black and thinking oh my gosh we are destroying these fields like thinking it was I literally called him in the field cultivator and I'm like what do you want me to do? 80% of this field is not fit. Not, not ready to go right. and we just blasted through them and it was weird this year it wasn't soft yeah. it was just black we we actually two pass with the field cultivator just shallow mm -hmm. he he was trying to keep ahead of us but two two bigger diggers you just yep. you just so, wanted to aerate the soil this so thing being opened, bigger opened it up and they came in a day later and it was yeah. like it was a normal spring, dry spring. It never brought up the big, you know, softball size mud lumps. And I don't like two passing with a field cultivator. It, it, this thing seemed like it chopped and just flipped that soil open. You can get, you know, field cultivators sometimes can get the wet dirt, you know, the dry dirt and make the mud balls. You know, oh, it doesn't seem like any time we've ever ran in the spring with that kind of stuff, the bars don't normally get that. So back to the question, the 4200 is definitely more aggressive, I would say, than what we have, new and improved. So it'd be interesting to see what it would do, but I would imagine it would be a lot like what we have right now. And which, I would, in the lighter soils mm -hmm. of ours, I think you maybe, depending on if it's early or late, if you got the weed pressure, then... With it being stronger springs or not spring shanks now yep. rather than the spring like what ours is um you were kind of limited on depth like you could put as much weight on it as you wanted and it was only gonna go in an inch because it was muck yep. uh, hard muck like we said you didn't sink it was just weird so that was kind of you could definitely a, make a, this one go in the ground. Typical year, we're not dealing with that. This was desperation. Mm -hmm. It worked. So the question would be, would we use it in a typical setting? I, like Doug said, in the, in the right spot. There's maybe some acres where you'd, maybe it would work. Maybe it wouldn't, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Why. We'll try it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the fun part, having one off track. And early corn planting, there's no weeds. You know, it it's... Yeah, it's a different condition. If you got weeds, maybe then, I don't know, maybe you feel color. Yeah, but. yeah trying to take the variability out of it. And with, mm -hmm. with five inch spacing, we're hoping we can get most yeah. of those weeds. Mm -hmm. so that's why we tightened it up so much. It's just to make it turn more dirt, make it work more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do, do a little bit more of those things. And it all came from feedback, guys that we talked to. You know, we'd like a little more in the spring. It mm -hmm. seems every year that we've built sulfurs, we've gotten more aggressive, more aggressive, more aggressive, because that's what guys wanted to see. Still want residue management, but more dirt at the same time. Mm -hmm. So how do you find that fine line? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think the one year we did run field cultivator on one half section or one quarter and the other side was sulfurted. And I think emergence on that sulfurted side was better. But then we had some of this weed streaking come through and we thought, well, but then, I think the weeds didn't end up being a problem Good. when you sprayed early enough anyway to control that. But mm -hmm. uh, head to head, it was like, wow, wish it was bigger. You know, 64 foot field color vader versus this 30 foot. You just can't get enough acres. You want to talk about the 5200 maintenance? How's it been for you guys on the 5200? Because you've got a few seasons on it now. Right. The only thing we had last night was the harrow. Yep. U bolts on the harrow because you are moving eight and a half when you turn yep so i've 
I have that with the field cultivator. The hero starts bouncing and you break bolts. So maintenance, other than that. Other than yeah. that. We greased it and we torqued the, retorqued the bearings. Yep. Which you said you don't need to do, but I did it because the book said to. So I was overruled. I like safe than sorry. That is very true. So that is, that is uh, retorqued true. them. It took us I don't know two guys maybe three hours to do, and greased it up, and that was it for pre maintenance. You know, how, about, how about this year, since it's been so dry and hard, you've listened to all the horror stories about chisel ball points and ripper points. How about blade wear with the 5200 and the 4200? You guys seen much of that? 4200, so we didn't do, I mean, yeah. the I don't think we're trying is, to go as deep with yeah. that thing, so sure. it isn't as big of an issue. The 5200, you can see the cultures that follow the quad track. Mm -hmm. Those, Absolutely. they're getting, they're getting there. The front more than the back, yeah. maybe? Yeah. So what would you suggest for that? Like, you, you take a lot of them from the center? Focus yeah. from the center to the outside. Okay. I, I mean, some of our guys do it, I would say. Not all of them, but you're right. With any track, it just seems mm -hmm. like it's harder. You know, it's, it's got like more resistance and wears a little faster. So we do have guys that, that will switch. And you don't have to do the back. You really only have to do the front two rows. Yeah, Yo, it's definitely the front. You lead measured them the other, was it an inch? Three quarter of an inch smaller mm -hmm. from the front to the back on really only the the first blade in the track to track crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but then when they, you compare that to what we used to do with the rippers we were putting new points on there what twice a season season so this now we've this is our second <laughs> season on this 5200 and now we're just starting to see the first set of coulters the leading coulters starting to show yeah. wear so it yeah it's i would say no issues with uh downtime and repairing parts or replacing parts. What would you be suggesting for changing it out? Like, what are you looking for it? How much wear to do the switch out or to completely get a new blade? Most of the guys, usually 21, you know, 24 inch disc blade. Oh, what do you down. mean? You can tip it forward. Just <laughs> keep putting the pressure on it. <laughs> you want to see the bottom hole. We've had guys that wear, they'll actually wear the, uh, the greaser off. Oh, oh my. Because they tip it so much okay. and there's no blade there. there you <laughs> go. All right. Cancel that idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you can. I mean, we've seen a little bit of everything. You know, guys with old original XTs like you, 12 inch blades, 13 inch blades. Wow. Well, we go through a lot of bearings. I'm sure you do. You're just pretty much running the hub in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you went to that guy who he had lines through his field and he had lines through his field because the only thing that was actually working was the hubs. He was just dragging the hub from one end of the field to the other. He said, leaves a little rough. I'm sure it does. You know, <laughs> most, most of our guys switch them at either 21 inches or 20 inches. You know, um, we were just talking the last guy we were at. When it stops covering, when you start having streaks through the field, then you need to switch them. That's kind of our recommendation. But, you know, I mean, it's just, we're happy that guys aren't having to switch them every season, that they are getting some longevity out of them and getting some efficiency, getting some acres put through it, really. Yeah, you'd have to farm a whole lot more acres than we do to need to switch them every year. That would good. not an issue for us. No, we don't want it to be a maintenance intensive mm -hmm. heavy thing otherwise you, you know, know you're moving eight and a half nine whatever this year seems like eight four is it the speed and you don't crush anything because of a rock i Good. thought too at that speed you know some of these bigger rocks that are fixed in the ground they're staying something's got to move so we haven't blown up anything mm -hmm. on that side of the life so Good. The only thing I seen and it happened after it was brand new was one shank ain't the angle it should be, but I think he was turning and hit one of those rocks <laughs> with it in the ground. Sure. Um, but that's the only thing, and I think that was just a luck of the draw. And big rock that don't move while turning. <laughs> no flex to the system. Yeah. yeah. Even a 5200 from last fall and so wet, you can mm -hmm. use it and have to use a ripper. You guys notice a big difference in acres done per day with the 5200? I would versus, say... Uh, versus a ripper? The 
4,200 was the biggest thing. Like just having, yeah. it pulls easy. Like even at 36 feet wide, it pulls easy. So switching even from with, soybeans, the 5,200, yep. yep. to going to the 4,200, absolutely. Horsepower, fuel efficiency, and acres in a day. It was huge. Right. Like that was like, the, he was, was keeping right up. on us. Tillage was keeping up. Yep. Uh, you, you get in the corn harvest and then you get a smaller machine back to the 52 pulls way harder um obviously way less acres per day but that's to make sense you're going deeper you're trying to do pulling a way more aggressive machine covering uh the trash up and that's to be expected so that's what i would say we liked maybe the most about the 4200 ease of setting and then just a beast for covering acres a day so just to confirm, because I know there's a lot of scuttlebutt out there about when you start 4200s, you don't really need a lot of tools to start them, correct? They're pretty pretty easy to use. It depends who shows up to the field. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say you need a salesman or a mechanic? <laughs> hey, that's fair. I will agree with that. I'll also own up for it. Should have maybe thought about bringing the service truck for setup. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to know that it isn't that hard. <laughs> yeah. It, it, everything looks harder when you don't have nothing but caveman tools. <laughs> Big wrench and a plier. Yeah. You know, MacGyver at its finest. Uh. <laughs> Any last thoughts for the season? I'm just glad it wasn't mud again. Mud makes everything so much we went worse. We from one extreme to the other, so we've seen both sides of it here. And uh, in in that mud stuff, you can cheat and nose that 52 up a bit to mm -hmm. get some more clearance, but everything has its limits. So uh, I'm just I'm just glad that you guys have almost actually got to run it in two extremes. Yeah. You can run it every year. Mm -hmm. I mean that's try to market it to guys as. 10 out of 10 years, we want you to run it, you know? I mean, and maybe not the greatest thing every year, but at least you can still use it, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen the extremes with our rippers and chisel plows too, and found the limits on what the chisel plow can handle in dry conditions. It's I think we've just seen a lot of miserable. less rock removal in the spring. Good. Uh, with, with not ripping, chiseling, <coughs> you're always digging pulling something up so it's a job security kind of a thing if you want to <laughs> if you want to employ somebody to sure. pick rock keep gripping you know well, we, we and have and we've ran it what two years now the 5200 on pretty much all acres and we unleashed the anhydrous bar yeah. on some of our lighter ground it wasn't supposed to go on that field but just due to what conditions we had it booked well where are we going to yep. go send them on the light stuff well with light stuff comes rocks yeah, and we're from yeah. small to massive and oh my gosh let's just say the rock picker boys were very busy out there because it's like oh, i don't remember it being this bad let's well, see it's amazing how quickly you forget what ripper shanks bring up and an anhydrous bar can really bring up rocks that was not and then it was wet so it moved easier last fall mm -hmm. uh, you just yeah you just find and everybody finds a rock or two where you think why me why do i have to be the first guy to pick that rock can't somebody else have done that <laughs> yeah people have farmed here for 120 right. years right why, why me? me so but that's what it is you know have you guys seen you use rippers for a long time have you seen you know, a yield disadvantage from going away from them going to a 5200 or has everything been pretty much similar to yours? I would say what I seen the first year when we demoed that 19 foot 5200. Yep. We took it out on the corn stalks and we just, we used it on the soybean ground. That's what we were looking for, covering up that residue. And we used it on, I don't know, 100 acres of corn ground to get a side by side, see what it looked like. And I was like, oh, the ripper is definitely getting it blacker. And I was pretty disappointed and didn't say nothing about it really. And come the next spring, it was to the line blacker, the 5200 versus the ripper, to the line. Like sure. you could walk in and 
tillage goes at an angle, planting it, I was planting it and I got out and I'm like, what is the difference here? And I'm like, oh, this is the field. And it's so I don't understand that. Someone smarter than me can explain why, but that it was, it was way blacker. It did not look as black in the fall, but I think that the ripper just brings up big slabs, big chunks of dirt. So visually it looks blacker, but it, realistically, I don't think it's covering, it's just covering up in between 27 inch strips. So I think the decomposition started quicker because it was sized and mixed, mixed mm -hmm. better. So um, yeah. And it, like the 5200 pretty much mixes all of the soil mm -hmm. where the ripper shank goes through every 26 inches, leaves everything lay on top of that ground. We always had a lot of guys, I mean, Minnesota's heavy tillage country. You know, a lot of guys always say, you know, we're hesitant to go away from it because of black dirt. You know, we have to do that. We have to go out and show the guys. Give us 40 acres to show you that in the spring, it's going to be black, if not blacker. And, you know, decomposition and stuff. So we try to see that every year. It maybe ain't such a big deal on soybeans, but a corn on corn rotation, we all know what we want there. Mm -hmm. Just less particles, less mass to deal with on a corn on corn the second year there of planting. So and you want it to break down so you don't have to dig it up right. the next year. Right. We usually get snow, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not, all that kind of stuff is helpful for us, you know. Mm -hmm. get some residue to break down and get it back into the soil that is all for today's episode if you aren't already be sure to subscribe to the larson farms youtube channel to follow along with their farming ventures and see how they use selford tillage on their operation uh, you can follow both larson farms and selford group on social media to keep updated with more great content if you're looking for more information on some of the products mentioned in this podcast, like 42 or 5200, you can visit SelfordGroup.com and learn how Selford can help you field your best. <laughs>